Today we're going to be talking about standout subject lines, how to get your emails opened, read, and get results. My name is Lorraine Ball and I'm a solution provider for Constant Contact. I also own a digital agency called Roundpeg and based in Indianapolis. After the program today, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with links to the recording and other resources. Be sure to grab a copy of the white paper before you log out of today's call. I'm so excited to be working with Constant Contact on this webinar and in general. I really feel that this is a tool that you can use to grow your business because they've put all the marketing campaigns you need together in one place. Newsletters and announcements, offers and promotions, feedback and surveys, and event registrations. For small business owners, marketing at its core is about getting results. Now, Larger organizations can afford to do marketing just to build brand awareness, but that's not economically viable for small business owners. It would be wonderful if every time you launched a marketing campaign, it immediately resulted in a sale, but that's not always how things work. Very often, there are interim steps. So what kind of results can you expect from marketing? Lots of different types of internet marketing, but specifically email marketing. Reasonably, you can expect clicks and downloads, visits to your store, perhaps reservations or appointments, and calls. These are all interim steps. These are things that you can get someone who's on your email list or someone who visits your website to do that hopefully will lead to a sale, lead to revenue, or if you're a not-for-profit association, donations. When it comes to response-driven marketing, email is hard to beat. It's delivered where people are. We know that 91% of U.S. adults actually have indicated that they like to get promotional emails from companies they do business with. And they are 136, they will spend 137% more um, when they get emails that actually have offers versus ones that simply say buy now without a specific offer. And so as you're thinking about your email campaigns this holiday season and throughout the year, special promotions just for you, email campaigns definitely are effective. Today, however, we're going to focus on one specific element of email marketing, and that is subject lines. Why are they so important? How to write good ones? How to be sure that you're focusing on both? desktop and mobile applications, and finally, what to do next. Why are email subject lines important? Pretty simple. An email that isn't open isn't effective. And so your objective is to get your emails read, drive more revenue to your business, and build brand awareness around your business or organization. As you can see, email subject lines, stir crazy, they capture your attention because they're a little bit fun, a little bit thought-provoking, help you do exactly what you're looking for. And the truth is that in a room full or a whole restaurant full of people, only about a third of them are going to open your email based solely on the subject line. Some other people will ignore you completely and others will open it because they know you or they recognize your company name. 
but there's a third of your audience out there that is going to open purely based on your subject line. And your objective is to use your subject line to win the battle between now, later, or never. What you want every time you send out an email campaign is you want people to see it and open it immediately. Because what happens is if they look at it and they go, oh, I'll read that later, it's going to get buried in their inbox and it moves from being later to never. There are three reasons that people will open your email. They recognize who it's coming from, it shows up at a good time, and there's a compelling subject line. So not to minimize the importance of the other two, but even if you do the first two right, you're going to end up in the later category if you don't do the subject line as well. And here's your challenge. As people are funneling through their inbox, you have about two seconds to catch their attention. Your first two words are critical as they're skimming down all the emails in their inbox. And if you don't catch their attention, you're not going to get them to open that email today. Why should they open your email? You have to identify your purpose you need to be clear and maybe clever. This is an email from Half Moon Yoga. Acro Yoga at 11,000 feet. You in? I'm not really sure what Acro Yoga is, but I get a sense it's a different kind of yoga class. And I'm curious, how are we going to do this at 11,000 feet? So that subject line piques my curiosity. They could have simply said, New workshop from Half Moon Yoga, and I would have said, ho-hum. They caught my attention because they were a little bit clever. You have to entice them, and you have to use a little bit of teaser text. Let me go back and show you the full email for a moment. Very often, this first line of text says something like, if you can't read this email, click here to view in browser. Well, that's important information when I open the email, but it's not important when I'm trying to decide whether or not to open this email. And so customizing that first line of text into what's called the preview text, especially for mobile, will help. Here you've got a little bit more information that fills in some of the blanks that the header created. So use that teaser text and customize that message to get your emails open. And choose your words carefully. This list of words here looks pretty innocent. They're all perfectly good words, except they have been overused by spammers. And so when you put words like win, click, act now, free, urgent, purchase in your subject line, there is a higher than normal chance that you will end up in a spam folder. The other thing that will put you in a, in, in, directly in someone's spam folder is using all caps in your headline, and using too much punctuation, too many exclamation points. Be really careful with them. One of the things that I really appreciate it in using the Constant Contact tool is the spam check button. I have an opportunity after I create an email to test my subject lines. And if I'm using um, one of these words and I don't realize, I'll get a message back that says, hey, you may want to change this or make this adjustment before you send that email. Because if my email goes into a spam folder, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be seen, I'm not going to get the response that I want. 
All right, so we've gotten some of the basics out of the way. Let's talk now about how to write good subject lines. Because a good subject line will make or break an email. This week in Cycling News, seriously, this is not a good headline. I know it's this week. Uh, this showed up in my email. And I know it's Cycling News because it's coming from Southside Cycling. This is a waste of five words. Tell me something unique. Tell me that I can, um, that summer gear promotion through the end of June. Check out our discounted summer gear. Save on summer gear um, or summer gear sale. Something that makes me go, oh, this is different from last week in cycling news or the week before or the week before. Standout subject lines, couple of quick rules. Number one, they need to be short and sweet. Four to seven words because a lot of email tools will actually truncate longer subject lines and so people won't see your entire message. Attractive offers, discounts, and gifts. Keeping it clean, very easy to read. Um, this is really more about, I think, the layout of the device on mobile, but short, sweet sentences. Again, brand identity. Make sure people know this is coming from your company. Don't use that email address that's bob at hotmail.com. Use bob at mycompany.com. You can also get people to open an email when you have a hint of mystery. You raise their curiosity. They really don't know what you're talking about. We just sent out an email the other day and I had one of my best open rates in a long time and I actually got a lot of people who sent me notes and told me they opened it because of the subject line and the subject line simply said let's talk about shoes. We're a marketing company and people saw that headline and thought what is she doing? Well the email was about some marketing uh, ideas that you could actually learn from Zappos and we weren't really talking about shoes, we were really talking about shoe marketing, but it definitely generated a lot of interest. Ask questions. Make people think. Just be careful when you ask a question in a headline that people don't say no. Uh, for example, do you want to know more about this? No, they won't open the email. Do you know everything you need to know about this? Um, do you know how to save money? Do you want to save money? Now those are questions people want to know the answers to. Create a sense of urgency. Limited time. Only five seats remain. Only ten minutes remain. I just got a note here um, from someone that I think it's a really interesting comment. Um, Seth says, I feel like I'm trained to completely ignore emails that aren't from someone I already know because everyone uses that same approach. And I think that, Seth, that's a really good point, this idea that it has to be permission-based marketing. You can't use these strategies with people who don't know you. They're not going to open your emails at a high enough rate. So you can actually, when you are talking to an audience of people who know you, who are familiar with you, you can be a little bit more conversational, you can take more liberties, you can be a little bit more thought-provoking. Again, my headline of 
let's talk about shoes, it stopped people, but they knew me well enough to know I wasn't really going to be talking about shoes. Thanks for your comment. You want to entertain people, um, maybe warn or inform them in your subject line. Give them a sense that you're sharing information. Three things you didn't know about. And one of my favorite, and we're going to do some examples of this, is to use some literary techniques. And the suggestions in this section will work equally well for blog posts and status updates on social media as they do in email marketing. One of the first tricks is that you can improve any subject line by using top appeal. This is where you give people this sense of three things they need to know or nine things they need or the four ugliest websites or the four best websites I've seen this month. Top three fashion mistakes, three three fashion items you have to have this year. What is it about numbers? We know that you're not going to be able to solve all of our problems, but there's something appealing. Well, if it's only three things, I have time to read that. If it's the top three things I need to know, I should pay attention. And on the other side of numbers, if you go very small, Two things you have to pack every time you travel. Small numbers work really well, and large numbers work amazingly well in headlines. 100 blog tips, 365 blog tips, or one new strategy to apply every single day. Both of those are um, very compelling and uh, work equally well. So top appeal, this idea of seven must-haves for fall, three things you have to know, that's a strategy that um, gets a little overused. So if you're going to use top appeal, don't do it in every email. Don't do it in every blog post. I think it starts to get a little bit exhausting. But every now and then, it's very effective. Um, this sense of urgency, only 12 seats left. Um, promotion ends tomorrow, get these, you know, before they run out. Um, personalizing works really well if you match the audience with the message. Why people your age need a retirement plan, this would be way better if it was why millennials need to, a retirement plan why um, it's not too late for baby boomers. Time's running out for Gen X to start their retirement planning. But if you use those very narrowly focused, you better be darn sure you're sending the right message to the right audience. Asking a question, exclusive appeal. This, this is an opportunity for, um, for you to send a message specifically to a group of people, not your entire database, but for former customers. Because we've worked with you before, because you've signed up in the past, because this, because that, let them know why they're members of the club and then give them something that they can't get anywhere else. And stay in the know, giving people an opportunity maybe um, to learn something they wouldn't learn elsewhere. Literary techniques. These are some of my favorite. I think they really work well. Um, and it just makes your writing seem a little more interesting.
The first is using onomatopoeias in your subject line. <clears throat> An onomatopoeia is a word that has a sound attached to it. When you read the words boom, crackle, pop, you actually kind of hear in your head boom, crackle, or popping sounds. I wouldn't necessarily do them with exclamation points because spam filters don't like them, but just the sound themselves, the word sound kind of catches your attention. Allusions. Allusions are when you make references to things people will recognize. The challenge with using an allusion is making sure your audience recognizes the reference. Allusions are also sometimes referred to as just pop culture references. Now, many of us who are in the baby boomer generation remember the actress Clara Peller. We remember her in the Wendy's commercials looking at those teeny tiny little hamburgers and shouting, where's the beef? And that phrase became associated with anything when people were asking, where's the substance? Where's the, the meat, the information? Or just, what you're giving me isn't enough. So, that pop culture reference works great as long as people remember Sarah Peller, or Clara Peller. But if they've never seen the commercial, they may not know why a carpeting company is asking, where's the beef? Alliteration. This is a style that I like to use, I think maybe just because my brain works this way. In this process, all of the words in your title, except for these little connecting words, start with the same letter. Seven simple solutions to savings. Winter warmers uh, can be used talking about clothing or recipes. Fall favorites. Or five fall favorites. Get a number in there, too. Chunking. This is um, when you pull two or three things together to kind of create a rhythm. Here you've got the lions and tigers and the Springfield bears, oh my. But the way I like to think about this, this is when you go to the grocery store or when somebody gives you a couple of things to mention, uh, remember, your brain can kind of pull together two or three. and you sort of repeat them over and over again to remember them. So I'll walk into the grocery store and I might be thinking in my head, peanut butter, oranges, and soup. Peanut butter, oranges, and soup. Peanut butter, oranges, and soup. So it's kind of chunking it. I start to bundle those three things into one little group. This process of sort of three connected items can really work well if the items go together in the, in the reader's mind. Numbers, and I've, we've already talked about this before. So here's some examples of how these different techniques can be used. Onomatopoeias. Splish, splash. Oh, the prices we've slashed. You can almost hear something hitting the water. And when you do the splish, splash, oh, the prices we've slashed, by doing a word that rhymes with the sound on the front end, it really kind of creates a nice rhythm. And so I am immediately attracted to the headline. I'm more likely to open the email. Cha-ching! I can hear that cash register ring. It's, it's impossible not to. And so I'm curious, how do we make the cash register ring? For Joe's pet newsletter, who let the dogs out, pet shots this Saturday? Can you just hear in the back of your head the singers going, who, who, who let the dogs out? That style will be great as long as anybody remembers that song. Fido's got 99 problems, but fleas ain't one. 
I think that's a clever headline, but I don't know what this, the cultural reference is. So from an illusion standpoint, it's not working for me. Fortunately, it's creative enough. It still works. Alliteration for Mother's Day specials. Make mom's morning miraculous. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but it catches your attention. Cards candy in one cozy couch. That one actually works equally well and could, could kind of be classified both as an alliteration and chunk it. Signing up for summer camp, I really like this first one. Archery, fencing, and sailing, summer camp 2015. What I really like about this is you've got the three most important words, archery, fencing, and sailing up front. And so if this headline gets truncated, I know it's time for summer camp 2015. It's, the email is coming from a camp, so this is what's important, these new programs. If this headline was reversed, and I've seen it reversed, and it gets truncated, all I see is summer camp 2015, ho-hum. Here's another, and this is a little bit longer, but it definitely is fun. Kids love it, parents dream about it, registration is open. Again, if this is truncated, I still get kids love it, parents dream about it. It's still fun. New England concert update. Three can't miss summer festivals. That one's okay. It's a fairly typical use of the numbers. This next one I think is really clever. 16 bands but only one Miranda Lampert. If I'm a Miranda Lampert fan, you definitely have my attention because you've made me feel like you're a Miranda Lampert fan too. All right, let's try a couple more and this time I'm going to pause and I want you to maybe write down how you would change some of these subject lines. Our monthly tax newsletter, new product arrival, get a free Apple Watch. Think about how you might redo these to get more attention from your readers. And actually, after we go through this exercise, when you're on your own, I want you to go back and look at five or six different campaigns that you've sent and look at your headlines and see if you can improve them. Pay less income tax with three overlooked deductions. Got my attention at pay less income tax. And, th and then you're telling me how. It's tempting to start with don't miss these three overlooked deductions. The problem with that is you haven't really given me the benefit. The benefit is pay less income tax or lower your taxes with three overlooked deductions. New product arrivals, you asked for it, it's here. I'm not even sure what it is, but the way they phrased it, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should be excited. Let's find out what it is. Get a free Apple Watch. Yeah, I don't care that you put three exclamation points at the end of it. I'm not excited. Apple Watch, want one? That's using a question to make me go, well, yeah, I kind of do. And if I don't, I'm not going to open the email because nothing you say is going to motivate me because I don't care about the Apple Watch. But if I do, it's piqued my curiosity. Where do you find your inspiration? Start reading the news and start looking at the way journalists write their headlines. Look at magazine covers. Look at what other people are doing. And the cool thing is with so many people sharing their updates on Facebook and, and LinkedIn and Twitter, you don't even have to go blog to blog to figure out what people are doing. Search results headlines. Look at blog titles. Look at 
at what your competitors are doing with their blog titles. Look at tweets um, on Twitter, the ones that get lots of engagement. Um, and there's something called the listicle, and there are a lot of social media sites that are doing them now. And they have really perfected the art of creating a headline that makes you curious. Their entire business model is built around it. For example, of this, look at sites like BuzzFeed, Upworthy, and Mashable. These are some of the companies that I think do a spectacular job of sucking me in day after day after day with their headlines. Test alternatives. This is three different um, headline alternatives that we tested. Um, the first one, it, and you see the subject line and then the, the pre-header text. The first one, no time for email, that's like saying you have no time for sales. This was a little bit more aggressive or assertive. It was a little more in your face. I felt like my readers would appreciate that because that's kind of my style. Um, the second one, it's time to rethink email. Your email marketing learns, needs to be refreshed, learn how. And the third one, the question, is your email failing? Save time and stay out of the spam folder. We sent, uh, we divided our list in thirds and we sent all three of these. And although each one did fairly well, we found the no time for email, the one that was a little bit edgier the one that really kind of said it like it was resonated with our audience. So we tend to do more campaigns with these kind of subject line and pre-header texts. Um, the it's time to rethink your email was the weakest and version three is your email failing was in the number two spot. As you're thinking about your headlines, remember that size matters. Shorter is better than longer. Um, 30 to 40 characters are typically what will appear on most mobile devices. And we know that about 25 to 50%, depending on the list and the time of day, but between 25 and 50% of your audience will actually look at your email on a mobile device. So make sure you, have your, you put your best foot forward. 6 to 11 words fit best. Um, make sure that you also customize your first 11 to 18 words. That's that pre-header text I showed you. That introduction is what supports your subject line and gets people to open your email. Couple of notes on desktop and mobile. So, on a desktop, you have what's called the preview pane. And on mobile, you have the pre-header text. So a preview pane displays a snippet of the email, typically the first half of the email. And pre-header text is the first line of text above the logo. So this is pre-header text. This is mobile. Here you see that first sentence of the email displayed on the phone. There's the subject line and the pre-header text. So you can see it sits right here above the message and it sits right here on the phone where they can view it. The preview pane is different. On a desktop, you're going to see the subject line and now you're going to see top third of the email. This is why when you're designing your campaign, and this is a whole different topic, but when you are designing your campaign, you want to make sure that your call to action is in this top third. So there's the pre-header text and there it is again. 
So what's next? Well, next you really want to create a campaign and then test your alternatives. Make sure that when you are creating campaigns in Constant Contact, you change the file name. Make sure you name it something that is relevant so when you go to look for it again, you don't have to think, well, what day did I send that email? I typically like to use the date the email is going to send and then a title. Um, and usually there are, I have about six or seven broad topics that I write about. And so my campaigns will typically be, you know, 115 strategy and then the title of the campaign. And so that way I can search for and find all the different emails I've written on a given topic easily. So that's how you then change it. So here they've got one wonderful winter weather cure. The next thing you want to do is spend some time and check the success of your subject lines. You can look at individual campaigns and see which ones had a strong open rate, which ones were above average, which ones were below, and which ones are above your industry. Now you can see here why the campaign names become important. This is my best campaign, but I don't really know what it was about. I don't know much about my subject line. If I had taken the time to rename these, I'd have better information. So, four simple steps to great subject lines. As you're planning your next campaign, brainstorm three different versions. Divide your list and send all three and see which ones perform better. Be sure to test on both uh, mobile and desktop before sending. So send yourself an email and look at it on your phone and look at it on desktop and make sure the pre-header reads the way you want it to. Make sure the preview pane looks the way you want it to. And then monitor your progress over time. Okay. If you have questions after today's program, if they have uh, questions after today's program, please feel free to reach out.